Shay, as the day went on, did what she normally did. Throughout the day, she slowly tried to adjust to the normal levels of noise around her. She slowly turned the volume up as time went on, only to have to stop when the sound around her became just too much to be comfortable in any way. In the end, she had to stay around the middle percentage of sound cancellation. It was the loudest that she was able to bear, and any more was just too much. Even so, at least it was a nice middle ground. Not as nice as being normal, of course, but nice. The day inched by slowly. Classes were most pretty boring, even if there were things she was learning that she hadn't known before. Spanish, for example. Shay scribbled in her notebook for a while, mainly. Her designs were messy, unorganized, and almost impossible to read because of how quick she wrote things down. But that was fine. These were rough designs, she told herself. Rough. PE rolled around eventually, which was Shay's least favorite class personally. She wasn't learning anything in the class, and she wasn't even able to sit and write in her notebook the entire time because they were always up and moving instead. In PE, she always seemed to take the same spot on the bleachers, the top left corner. People would squeeze onto the bleachers still, and even then a few had to sit on the floor anyway. But there was more space near the top than one would think. As the teacher rolled in the old television to play the obligatory video to start the class, the bell rang through the school and Shay sank down into her seat, ready to be subjected to boredom for an hour. The school-issued gym outfits were scratchy and a bit too big in some areas, while a bit too small in others. And overall, it was not a very comfortable experience. Captain America showed up on the screen and said a few things, which Shay didn't even have to try to tune out. She picked up enough, though, to know that they at least didn't have to do the Captain America fitness challenge. That was never a fun time for anyone. The coach said a few words, but barely anyone was even paying attention anyway, so it wasn't like it mattered. He seemed to know this too, as eventually he just seemed to give up and sent them all off doing laps. There was a collective groan that came from the entire class, and Shay didn't even stop it as the sound came from her lips as well. There were so many things that she could be doing that were so much better than running laps of all things. But no, the state required the class, so they had to take it. The students slowly made their way off of the bleachers, and this is where the other good thing about being in the very back of these seats. Shay was always one of the last to get off of the bleachers, so she was one of the last expected to start running. That was a nice thing, at least more time to think instead of her thoughts being interrupted by aching muscles. She finally reached the faux wood floor as her classmates were mostly on their second lap. She waited until there was a gap near the end and hopped in, joining the crowd of people circling around and around the gym. People talked to their friends about random things, be it homework or some guy that they liked, and Shay found all their conversations rather boring to say the least. She wished that she could have some peace and quiet to focus on her own thoughts if she was able to, rather than being constantly distracted by the chatter of those around her. Shay was then reminded of the noise cancellation devices, which she really needed a better name for, that she had clipped onto the skin behind her ear. She reached into the pocket of her hoodie because the pockets on girl pants couldn't hold a phone, let alone anything else, and felt for a small earring box that she had managed to turn into the control panel for the devices. She found it and was prepared to pull it out and cancel out the sound around her when she managed to pick up on just a few words. Stark helped me make upgrades to the suit last. Oh, her attention was caught and her curiosity was piqued. She released the box and took her hand out of her pocket on the front of her hoodie, choosing instead to focus on this conversation that was so very interesting. Then another voice joined in. Dude, really? What did you add? Just an extra parachute. Nothing much, but he's been really paranoid ever since I used mine and then fell off the building before releasing it. You should have more faith in you, dude. I mean, you were fine. And you're Spider-Man! I know! Shay's thoughts went into overdrive. Spider-Man? Her eyes shot off involuntary to the two boys jogging in front of her. She was surprised to see that one of them was the boy that she had knocked down in the hallway before first hour. She furrowed her eyebrows. 
but couldn't remember his name for the life of her. She moved her gaze to the other boy, brown curl sat on his head, and big brown doe eyes sparkled as he stared at his friend and talked animatedly. This boy she did recognize, his name was Peter Parker, and he had a bit of a reputation around school, but Spider-Man? Really? And then suddenly, everything fell into place. Around homecoming of that year, Spider-Man had been at what had so far probably been his peak of popularity around the school. That was also when a lot of the drama with Parker that Shay could remember had happened. Parker was known for being the smartest kid on the decathlon team, so lots of people had freaked out when he had quit the week before nationals. He joined back the morning of, and was welcomed back with open arms, and then abandoned them in DC, and didn't show up until after the competition was over. Their school newspaper had written a whole article on the third page about it. Of course, Spider-Man had just so happened to show up and save the team from the elevator when Parker was missing. Liz Toombs had been quite the popular girl and the captain of the academic decathlon team. And it was common knowledge that Peter Parker had a crush on her. He had even asked her to homecoming before abandoning her after less than five minutes. Her father had been arrested only a few hours later, stopped by none other than Spider-Man. The other boy, the Asian kid jogging next to him who, if Parker was Spider-Man, obviously knew Parker's identity. He had shouted out during this very class at the beginning of the year that Parker knew Spider-Man. Parker himself had awkwardly confirmed it. It ended up getting both of them an invite to a party, which Parker left after five minutes. Later that night, reports of Spider-Man in the same suburb were across the internet. Parker missed school a lot too. He had gotten into big trouble close to the beginning of the year for skipping classes. Even so, Parker was insanely smart. And before he got an incredible tech-savvy suit, Spider-Man was known to have made all his own weapons, like his web shooter, meaning he must be pretty intelligent. So that lined up between the two of them. And to top the entire thing, people constantly talked about how young Spider-Man sounded, almost like a high schooler. She thought to herself as a wave of revelation washed over her body. And then suddenly, in that exact moment, she had no doubt whatsoever in her mind that Peter Parker was, in fact, Spider-Man. As the final bell rang through the Hall of Midtown, Shay made her way to the school media center. She sat in one of the armchairs in the back corner and went through her work, switching back and forth between homework and her notebook, really doing less of the former than she probably should have, but what are you gonna do? She glanced through the window into the hallway, watching the door that she knew the academic decathlon team would soon emerge from. Finally, the door opened and people began pouring out. She watched Peter Parker perform some sort of secret handshake with the boy from gym before they went their separate ways. Shay quickly gathered up her things, threw her backpack over her shoulders, and left the media center, turning after only a few steps to go outside through the doors that Parker had just used. He was leaving the school grounds when she got outside, the cold air biting at her nose as she hopped down the steps to follow him. Parker increased his speed a bit, causing Shay to scowl but do the same, keeping behind him at a good amount while still having her eye on him the whole time. Finally, Parker turned abruptly into an alley, which was probably where he was planning to change. Shay furrowed her eyebrows and felt a frown form on her face. Of all the alleyways you could have chosen. Shay flattened herself against the wall and peeked inside the alleyway. She scanned it and her eyes locked onto the few people emerging from the shadows of the back of the alley. She could basically see the hairs on the back of Parker's neck stand up, and he froze. So the rumors of him having sixth sense must be true then. Parker looked up just as a gruff voice asked, What are you doing in our alleyway, kid? She felt a chill run down her back, and whether it was from the cold stone she was leaning against, the freezing air, or the scene she was watching unfold, Shay wasn't sure. Parker blinked at the group before stammering out, I I'm sorry, I didn't... Please, I don't want to hurt you. Yeah, Parker could definitely do some damage to these people, but she really didn't want him to. These people weren't bad. They were just protective of their turf, and 
to be perfectly honest, most people in society in general had never been the nicest to them. She took a deep breath, steeled her resolve, and stepped into the alley. Peter, there you are! I've been looking everywhere for you! She exclaimed. Shay brought her hand to her chest. Almost gave me a heart attack, I swear to God. The group all turned to her abruptly. Parker looked like he was holding back a sigh of annoyance. Shay could have laughed. He was thinking you would have to save her now too, huh? We'll see who'll be saving who today, Parker. The men, on the other hand, all let out sounds similar to growls at her presence. Then, the man in the front, akin to the leader of the group, his name was Pat, raised his eyebrows, his eyes widening as he asked Shay, Good, is that you? Pat himself had grown up on the streets, and he had the scars to show it. The most prominent one was right over his left eye, making it so that he looked like he had the backstory of some sort of supervillain. Of course, he wasn't, but it was a bit funny to imagine sometimes. Pat, with his graying brown hair and ocean blue eyes, would be the most non-threatening villain ever if he took away the scars on his face. His personality wouldn't suit it anyway. I think it is another one. Jacob, if she was remembering correctly, nodded. Yeah, it's me, she said, giving a weak smile. A smile made its way onto Pat's face. Well, hell, kid. What are you doing here? I was actually just heading back home to study with my friend Peter here, to be perfectly honest. She gestured to the teenager watching the exchange with confusion. She hated lying to them, but these people weren't the kind to trust strangers quickly, and this should help. I have absolutely no idea how he ended up here in your alley, but he's good, I promise. Oh. Pat looked even a bit embarrassed as he turned to Parker. Um, sorry about that kid. No hard feelings? Parker shook his head frantically. Pat gave him a toothy grin. Good. Well, this has been fun, but we should probably get going. Got a test on Monday. She turned to Parker. Come on, Peter. She waved him over, and after just a split second of hesitation, he nodded and moved towards her. Hey, kid. Pat called, causing both Parker and Shay to turn to him. He was staring into the eyes of the boy, though, only. You should stick with Shay, you hear me? Parker didn't speak, so Pat went on. We all really care about her. She's a real good one, even if she doesn't admit it. He gave a smile to Parker. Promise? Shay felt her cheeks heat as Parker nodded slowly. All right, uh, see you all later, she managed to say, grabbing Parker around the wrist and pulling him out of the alley. She didn't let him go as she dragged him through the streets of New York. Even as he squirmed and tugged a bit to get out of her grip, she smirked just a little bit at these attempts. He must not be used to people rivaling his strength. Finally, after a few crowded blocks, she pulled him to the side and into an alley that she knew for a fact was safe and clear of people. As she released him and Parker massaged his wrist, which was probably aching from all the escape attempts he made, she at last turned to him. She almost laughed. Almost. Nice alley picking, Parker, she said as she leaned back against the cold stones of the alley wall. What do you... Parker's words seemed to die in his throat. What? I mean, if I were you, I wouldn't want to accidentally pick an occupied alley as where I change. Don't want people finding out your big secret, do you? I don't... What? He was blinking at her, struggling to understand what she was talking about. That was very evident. There was a moment in which Peter seemed to attempt to form words, to say something, anything. He was obviously failing miserably. After a few long seconds, Shay realized that he wasn't going to say anything more. So she reached down, scooped up his bag, and before he could stop her, or even react, she had opened it, stuck her hand inside, and pulled out his Spider-Man suit from its location under his books. She wondered if it was simply on instinct that he caught it from the way his jaw dropped and his eyes stared into hers. Shay couldn't help the smirk that appeared on her lips at his shock, because though she just revealed that she knew his deepest, darkest secret, she couldn't help but admit that the look on his face was actually pretty damn worth it. This was a great fanfic. Stay tuned for chapter 4. Um, I wanted to 
say something um i'm not sure if you're supposed to talk about it on the internet but uh i'm really sorry to the families that have lost um loved ones i'm so sorry because it's horrible kobe bryant will always be a legend and it's just i don't know what to say it's so bad I really wish I could turn back time, but, um, I hope they all rest in peace and have found a better place. Make sure you live your life to the fullest and accomplish your dreams, work towards them, do things you want to do, because we don't know when our story's gonna end.